called by that name. And today, the word business analysis has become so widespread and people around the globe follow it, they understand the practice. And I'm really glad that we have an institution like IIBA, uh, which is spearheading this movement. And I'm quite confident that this hour that you spend with us can be a game changer for your career. And we have seen thousands of success stories once people get themselves skilled and they get themselves certified. Uh, just a quick intro about myself. Uh, I think Judy introduced me. My name is Ellen Mishra. I'm the principal trainer, author at Adaptive US. I am also a practicing BA and I have been consulting uh, close to 100 clients over the globe. Uh, I have worked in possibly 12 different countries for a continuous period of time. And I'm also probably the luckiest one to achieve all seven IIBA certifications in the first attempt. And possibly today I saw somebody completing six certifications and I was thinking maybe I'll have some company near future. So in this webinar, what are we going to do? We are trying to understand how do you get yourself uh, CBDA certified? Of course, we will talk why certifications matter. And CBDA is a wonderful certification for all of us who would like to learn about data analytics. Data is playing a much more vital role today because our ability to capture data has tremendously increased over the last 30 years. So the amount of data we could capture 30 years back uh, was minuscule. Uh, it, it may not be comparable to what we are able to capture today and what we will be able to capture in the future. With the advent of IoT and similar devices, uh, our ability to capture data will increase probably a billion times. So we will learn a little bit about data analytics and how data analytics can help. And I'm also trying to show you a very simple example, which I practiced with a client and how we improved a client's process using data analytics. And here is a nice offer for you. Um, I'm going to give you a code at the end of the webinar, uh, which will allow you to get extra two months of access to our resources without any payment. So again, I think, uh, again, as I said, I think IIB is probably one of the best things that happened to the world of business analysis. Um, it has been a tremendously helpful organization in kind of making uh, the business analysis world understand or the other parts of the world understand what we BAs do and promoting business analysis as a skill and as a profession as well. And I'm, uh, I'm hoping that IIB will continue to do very well in the future as well. And we will have many more offerings coming from IIBA in the near future. So here is a pop quiz for you. Uh, what is the average increase in salary after professionals got IIB certified? So maybe you can put it in the chat window. I did not put it as a poll, but you can try. I think I can see some answers. Okay, somebody says 25, B, B, 20, 20, okay, 15, 20, 20, 15, okay, 50%, okay, wow, not bad. Okay, I, I see a lot of answers and I'm going to go by the number which was given by IIBA, not by us. Uh, so the number actually stands at 20%. Although it's an average number. So somebody may get 10%, somebody may get 30%, somebody may get 80% and someone may get 100%. So we have had students who got up to 100% hike in salary because they got themselves trained and certified. I am believing that you guys can do the same thing as well. But one thing for sure, you will find yourself more confident at work. You will have better job satisfaction because you understand things better. You are able to manage projects better. You are able to manage um, data analysis or business analysis better. 
because you have been through an IIBA program. And this is something that our students got. So 49% got a better role at work. They were not business analysts before. They became business analysts. 58% reported a higher salary and 91% reported higher confidence. So this is a publicly available data. I have given you the link. Uh, you can actually go and check the survey that we did on LinkedIn for our students. So plenty of students, I think uh, now we are almost inching towards 1400 IIB certifications, which I would say is an amazing number to achieve. Uh, and you can read a lot of career transformation stories in this blog. Um, these are all real people. You can reach out to them on LinkedIn and get their inputs as well. In fact, as I speak, uh, one of our students completed CBD a couple of hours back. So how do we actually go about preparing for this particular certification? In fact, you can apply this principle almost for any certification that you are going to do. So if you observe the very first point seems to be very trivial and you will think, how do I make up my mind? And is that the most important step that I will follow in any examination process? Indeed, it is true. If you don't make up your mind, you don't do it. Like we always say, if you think you can do it, you're right. If you think you can't do it, then also you're right. So it's your mind which is making you achieve or not achieve a particular goal. So how did I achieve all seven IIB certification? Because I made up my mind. It's not that I am ultra intelligent and the only BA in the world who can do it. Nothing like that. Just that I will always make up my mind. I'll take a deadline saying, if IIB comes up with a new certification, usually within three to four months of the launch of the certification, I would make up my mind to take the certification. And that's what is the beginning step for you. And of course, there is uh, pluses and minuses as well. So I'll tell you what you will lose if you don't get certified. There are a lot of people who talk about a lot of things like saying certifications are useless, um, they're just a paper. If you treat a certificate as a paper, it becomes a paper. But if you treat any certification journey as a learning process, you are going to tremendously benefit. Trust me, even a person with my caliber, my experience, whenever I have gone for a new IIB certification, I have learned many things new. Because as part of your work, you may be very confined to one way of thinking. Like say for me, the application development world is the dominant world in which I operate. Data analysis is not the world where I operate or cybersecurity is not the world where I operate in a large significant time. So when I go through such certifications, I actually learn a lot of nuances about the field, what is the field expecting, how the field can be helpful in the work that I am going to do. And for sure, it's very, very well documented that you generally tend to lose about $20,000 per year if you don't get yourself trained and certified, which is a lot of money, I would trust. Then, of course, it's important to get trained. I'll tell you why. Because what I have observed is uh, without training, you can take the test. It's not that training is mandatory uh, from IABA, but without proper training, the process may take about six months longer. And you will probably go through a lot of hardships as well, uh, because you wouldn't have guidance on the process. You wouldn't have the resources to go through the uh, certification. And that's what we have seen with most of our students. Those who take training, they usually complete the certification six months earlier. That actually kind of gives you about $10,000 plus benefit. And of course, when you wish to get trained, choose a partner uh, whom you can trust and look at things from the training organization. What is their past success rate? What is the faculty who teach you 
like the faculty who teaches CBDA for us, uh, my colleague Tom Tomasovic happens to be from MIT. He's a graduate of MIT, uh, fabulous data analyst. And you can actually go and look for him on LinkedIn by the name Tom Tomasovic. Uh, then of course, look at the quality of content, the focus of the Institute on your training and on your success. Then obviously we need to prepare ourselves smart. We don't want to uh, struggling so hard. And sometimes I really find it very difficult and kind of a little bit disturbing when people say they have been preparing for years together. Sometimes I hear somebody prepared for five years to complete a certification. And I wonder why did it take so long? I mean, it can be a three months, six months, eight months journey. It need not be a horrendous five year journey. That's not right. And possibly somewhere somebody is going wrong. So few things can happen is if you lack clarity on the concepts, which is what we generally emphasize on Ultimately, what we're trying to do, we're trying to help the business to do better. That's the ultimate objective of any business analysis, any data analysis exercise. And, and if that clarity of the tasks and techniques come to our mind, it will be a lot easier to write the test and use them at our workplace as well. Then I think another thing we also have to make keep in mind that all tests are a little tricky. Uh, they are not straightforward from the book type of questions. So obviously, if you haven't practiced questions, generally you tend to do not so well in the test. Uh, so that's something which is a fact for any international test. So you have to be prepared with a good number of questions. So how do I prepare for my test, including the CBDA test? I try to understand each domain and each task what is it that it is trying to achieve? And if I can build an example around it, that makes it a lot easier for me. And I always rely on mind maps. Uh, they have been my great friend uh, and generally try to understand a bit of a key input output relationship as well. And of course, since we are studying data analytics, we need to understand the techniques used in this world as well. So, each technique comes with some strengths, some weaknesses as well. Some techniques are simple, some techniques are fairly complex to understand. And some of data analysis, analytics techniques have taken me months to understand, even after completing CBDA. So this is the map that uh, we prepared based on the CBDA guide. And this entire presentation deck will be available to you. So don't worry, don't try to copy something. And based on this particular task flow, uh, I actually created a Excel. So let me see if I can show you that Excel one second. Uh, I have to come out of this mode so that I can actually click on this Excel. Ah, yes. So let me open the Excel and show you uh, the entire steps that the guidebook talks to you. So for example, first is to understand the business problem. What is that the business is struggling with or where do they see an opportunity? So one of the projects that I did with a client was to help them improve their estimation accuracy. So the company does a lot of projects and during those projects, they used to find that the estimation accuracy is really bad. Like sometimes it's minus 75% and sometimes going up to plus 250%. So practically it's no estimate. When you say something can be as bad as minus 75% and plus 250%, practically you are not able to estimate. So we wanted to bring the estimate into a range which can be trusted by stakeholders. So that's the problem that the business was handling. So obviously for me, my key clients were project managers, the developers, and the PMO team in the client place. And we wanted to bring estimation accuracy up and do it in a more scientific data-driven manner, rather than just being a wild guess, which is what the teams were doing at that point in time. So obviously, as a project, we need to understand what drives project effort, 
what is the relative impact of these parameters? And then based on that, we could actually build a model and see. And obviously the technique that we took is predictive analytics because uh, estimation is a very continuous variable. I believe you will understand continuous variable means it can take any number. Oh, sorry. One second, I think, let me see the Excel. Oh, okay. I'll go back and say the presentation as well, once I finish the Excel. Uh, so predictive analytics seems to be the right approach for this kind of problem. And what we did is we collected data for last 100 enhancements that the teams have completed. And obviously we wanted to use all the data that we had and, and we got this data from different projects. And of course, we looked at the data to see if there is any extreme outlier, uh, which we would not like to put it into the data calculation purpose, because one or two outliers can completely destroy your model. So we said, okay, let's keep these outliers out. Um, then we used regression analysis. And of course, we had a challenge because some of our data were categorical data. They were not continuous data. Um, and when you try to use a regression model, you will need continuous data. These are some things that you will learn during the process. Uh, I'm just being, uh, I have to go a little fast because I have to explain the whole project to you. And obviously we did not get any significant insights from the data that we collected because it looked almost like uh, a spreadsheet with a lot of data, but we couldn't draw any graph or chart out of it. Sometimes if you have a trend graph or something that can give you some insights as well. Okay, and then once we completed our regression process, we could actually reach up to 80% accuracy on most of our estimates. So in the future, when we applied that model on uh, the test data, uh, we could actually see our estimation accuracy hovering between minus 20 to plus 20. Imagine we started a situation when it was minus 75 going up to plus plus 250, whereas at the end of the project, it became minus 20 to plus 20, which is an amazing improvement in how we performed our tasks. And obviously we communicated through the project managers through email presentations, and we recommended this practice to be adopted in other projects as well because this was a sample project that we had taken up, uh, which had done about 100 small projects. But there were many other projects in the organization which were into those kind of activities. And obviously, how do we scale up at an enterprise level? We said the PMO team can be trained on these techniques and can guide the other projects in getting this aspect implemented. Uh, because the project was driven from the PMO team. So as you can see here, this is a complete uh, project run through, of course, at an extremely high level. Uh, I can't get into the details in this, uh, but you, I will share this Excel again with you. The details, you can always work it out by taking a project at your end. So let me go back to one second, go back to the sharing mode and I will go back to the presentation. Okay, so this is what I was uh, sharing with you, uh, the workbook. And obviously from the exam point of view, it's important that you prepare well for your exam. And again and again, I would highlight the fact that uh, you need good number of questions to understand and get your clarity in your mind. And sometimes the questions can have some minor distractions, like there could be a negative question, uh, which if you don't read the question carefully, you tend to make mistakes. So those are very standard question setting tricks that many examiners put. And they're also trying to understand or assess if you are fully absorbed into the process do you read the questions carefully? Do you understand the questions carefully?
and and that's a level three test which can be much much more complex compared to the other tests which are like CBDA, CCBA, CCA. They're in the middle tier, and the lowest tier is ECBA where you actually get the simplest questions. So here you expect the mid level question complexity, two to three questions, two to three sentences per question. Each question will have four options and one option is assumed to be the correct option. So you don't have a choice to put two uh, and you have to choose the best answer. And in general, we advise people to take multiple exam simulations, which means you actually take it through like the final, final test. So you set up one hour for your test, you sit at home in a quiet place and complete the entire 80 or 50 questions that is supposed to be taken in the actual test. So you do it uh, in a practice mode for three to four times so that when you go for the actual exam, uh, you will not feel nervous and you would have seen the pattern itself. Uh, so I'm going to show you a portal that we built and that's where we actually put our um, questions and simulations. I'll just show you the portal as well, which you guys also can go and do a, a free registration. There's no charge to it. Uh, it's called, uh, one second, let me share my screen. Uh, let me share my entire screen. That's the best thing to do. Okay, so it's thinkific, thinkific.adaptiveus.com. This is where we put all our content and you can actually sign in and sign up for a free trial on CBDA content. But my interest is more on the simulation pattern uh, because that's what you will actually take the test on. So that's on a product called simplesim.app. Um, so this is again integrated with Thinkific, you don't have to worry, but I'm just showing you how the actual exam will look like for you. So I'm going to Adaptive US, uh, that's the school name. Okay, so I am logging in as a student of Adaptive. You can also experience the platform. It's not uh, the, uh, maybe the whole question set will not come for you, but part of the question set will come for you. So let me go to the student mode. And as you can see here, so I have put some ECBA, CCBA, CBDA, and here is CBDA. So you can start the test. As you can see here, it's a two hour test. So it's going to test you for a reasonably long time. It's not like one hour test. Okay, so I'm going to take the exam. So it says here a little bit of a warning saying it's a two hour test and you can start the test here. So this is how you will actually see the final exam test as well. As I was telling you, you have a question and you have four options and you have to choose the right option. And you also have an option to flag a question which is a very important part of remembering that suppose you don't get a question uh, in the first attempt. I, I am not able to see the answer or I'm not able to think about the answer. Then what usually I do is I put option C, just a random option. Uh, okay, and don't worry about whether it is C or B or A or D, uh, whichever letter you like, be consistent and put that. For me, the preferred letter is C. Okay, and then you will be actually able to see something like a flag saying, I am not able to get this answer right now. I will come back and revisit the question. That's how the exam simulation system will look for you. This is what we have built. And of course, we have a provision for um, seeing all the questions together. And as you can observe here, in the simulation test and in the actual test, you will see 75 questions to be attempted in 120 minutes. So you usually get about one minute, 30 seconds to answer a question. Generally, that's good enough. You will generally not run out of time 
um, if you are moving at a reasonably good speed. So remember, that means we have to do about 40 questions an hour. Okay, so an hour has 60 minutes. So 40 questions means about one and a half minutes, uh, we can take the test. And some people advise that when you take a test, maybe instead of starting from question number one, you can start from question number 16. Some people suggest that's a good idea because some people say usually the initial questions are slightly harder. I'm not sure whether that's a fact or not, but some students have said so. So generally what I suggest is you go ahead and start taking the questions from question number uh, 16 or 20 onwards, and then come back and complete the initial questions which you have left out. So this is how the exam system will look like for you. And of course, we do give a lot of chapter end questions as well, which means as you complete a particular chapter. So let me show you uh, the simulation system as the learning system as well. So let me log in to student login. It's already there. And let me go to CBDA masterclass. This is where all our training content is put. So it's good to go there and figure out what is there. Okay, so let me kind of make it proper. So as you can see here, we have chapters. Uh, for each chapter, there's a short video. There is a study guide as well, which is kind of chapter wise. And some of this content you can access free as well. And if you observe, we generally try to make it as simple as possible, not like write a lot of words, uh, mostly try to put things into a tabular form wherever we can. Okay, not that everything can be put into a uh, tabular form, but wherever possible, we will try to put it into a tabular form. So let me see if there is any tabular form here. Uh, little unusual in this one. Okay. I think in BA work, we probably have it a lot more, but we also highlight the keywords like must, because usually if the standard is saying it is as a must, that means this is something which is expected to be followed. So questions can be asked whether it is a must, whether it is a should, that means do we follow it all the time or do we follow it sometime? Um, then, as you can see here, there are a lot of good questions uh, in every chapter. It says which estimation method is being used, all kinds of things. So these are your practice questions. Then you also have a lot of flashcards which you can play around and learn as well. And there's audio book and all kinds of things, presentation, everything is there uh, to make you ready for the test. Okay. Then once you are done, you have taken your training, you have done your study guide, um, you have done your questions, it's the time to apply for the exam. Uh, fortunately for CBDA, the exam application process is really, really simple. It doesn't expect you to um, kind of do a lot of application detailing as it expects in CBAP or CCBA. Um, so mostly you have to agree to the norms prescribed by IIBA, and you have to pay the fees for the exam. Um, and there's actually good news. I think some of you might have observed. Uh, IIBA has announced a 20% rebate on CBDA fees uh, for this month, I believe, for the month of October. Um, so if some of you are ready um, and you want to do some good practice questions and then go for the exam, you can do Okay. So here is the offer saying, for a limited time, IAB members get 20% exam repair for CCA and CBDA during October. Okay, um, that's also an option available to you. If you wish to get yourself certified, you get $50 off from IABA as well. Okay. Then another important point I would like to highlight to many of you, many of you may decide to take the test 
or at your home because it's convenient. You don't have to go and find a test center or anything. And I generally prefer to take tests from home because it's more familiar environment. Um, only thing I still have to make sure that I don't run into any issues during the test. So few things that we generally advise to all our students saying you should keep two Windows based computers. People say Mac will work or not. I say Mac will work, but you have to test it thoroughly uh, and keep one for backup. That means for some reason, if the main desktop or laptop doesn't work, you can use the second one. But the important part is to have admin access to the computers. So if you don't have admin access to the computer, you may not be able to take the test because the test expects you to install a tiny software uh, just before the exam. So if that software doesn't get installed, then you have a problem at hand. Again, two internet connections, one backup, one primary, uh, one external camera. It's useful to have an external camera because in general, the laptop cameras may not be that good. So your identity needs to be verified by the proctor who is somewhere in the world. We don't know where is he or she. And if the ID card is not very clear enough for the proctor, the proctor may not allow you to sit for the test. And then of course, have some good power backups so that you don't run into any trouble. Usually join the exam 20, 25 minutes prior to the test time. Uh, so that if there is any technical issues, you can handle those technical issues. You also need a clean desk and a noise-free room, not like the place where I'm sitting, where I have a lot of books behind me. That's not acceptable. Uh, you need to have a clearly clean room and you actually have to sew the room around using your laptop or your camera to make sure that you have nothing in your room. Nobody is permitted to come into your room or go out of your room. You are not supposed to have your phone with you and all that. So from that point of view, I can recommend a nice blog that my colleague wrote. Uh, I will just show you that blog name as well. Uh, and it's a very detailed blog on the online exam preparation, uh, especially from IIB perspective. So let me just search that out for you. Uh, it's online. Yeah, it's called Ground Rules for IIBA Online Examinations. So let me pull up that blog and I'll give you the link as well. Okay, so this is the link and I am pasting it here. This is a pretty nice blog written on everything that you should do or should not do during the test. So just for some uh, wrong reason, your test should not get canceled. But even then, in spite of all your best intent, best effort, sometimes some things may go wrong, like the technology doesn't work uh, or something like that. If you have any issue like that, immediately report it to info at, not info, certification, certification at iiba.org certification, sorry, I made a mistake here. Uh, because if you find any issue in the exam, please immediately let IIBA know that you had a difficulty during the exam and maybe you will get a free retake or something like that. Because the fault was not with you, the fault was probably with the exam uh, system. Of course, then we get ready to take the test. And this is the final step. And what are the things that we should take care of during the test? Um, always remember, every test is a test on the published guide. So you should be very, very comfortable with the published guide. Um, again, as I said, first few questions can be harder. So maybe you can start with question number 20. Then some students have a tendency to getting stuck at a question. That's a very dangerous thing to happen because you remember, you just have two hours to complete the entire question set. So if you spend enormously high time on a particular question, thinking what could be the answer, why am I not getting it, all kinds of things. And remember in whoever you are, there'll be some questions which will stump you. 
Okay, you will not be able to figure out what the question is trying to get the answers at. Uh, that's natural, I don't know why, but I also face that problem. Um, and sometimes you just have to leave that question, as I said, mark it as C or D or B, something you answer and then go get going and come back and review those questions later when you have time, okay? And obviously analytics has a lot of diagrams, histogram, normal chart, all kinds of things. Get some familiarity on those charts and graphs as well. Uh, there are plenty of uh, visual uh, elements in analytics area. Like we have so many types of box plot, histogram. What are these charts trying to tell us? Trends, um, double column trends, all kinds of things exist in the analytics world. And visualization is an important piece because uh, visuals can communicate a lot more than just numbers. If I put a lot of numbers on your screen, you may not be able to figure it out, but if I show you a pie chart uh, or a bar chart, you will be able to appreciate it a lot better. So remember, it's always about the most correct option or the most appropriate option, not necessarily correct option. Go as per the guidebook, Maybe in your organization, you have a slightly different practice and it can always happen. Your practices are either evolved much more than what CBDA talks about, uh, or for some reason, your domain is very strict. So you have to be very, very careful about things that you do uh, with your data. Like say, for example, uh, if you are working in healthcare domain, your data privacy laws are far, far stricter compared to if you're working in a retail, segment. So obviously you have to be very, very careful uh, in your company and your practices may be much more stringent. So there is also a technique called elimination, uh, which is a very nice technique. That means when you see four options, you realize that option four seems to be highly improbable. So you can actually strike it out and say, I'm going to focus on the remaining three questions. That's what we call it as elimination technique. So just a quick note about how we can help you in your data analysis career journey. Uh, about, as I said, we are strongly focused on content quality. We pay very high attention to make sure that the content is easy to read, easy to understand uh, and practice. Uh, we only have five facilitators in the entire company. And each one is picked after a very thorough review. So some of our faculty members have been BABOC authoring team committee members. They have been part of exam setting committees. Uh, so that's how careful we are about picking up our uh, trainers. And of course, we have been through this process for many, many years. Um, already we are inching towards 1400 certifications as I said, which is probably a record for any institute. And then we also have triple guarantees on our live instructor-led training. So these trainings come with success guarantee. That means if you don't pass the test uh, following our guidelines, we will pay for your retake fees two times, not one time, two times we will pay for your retake fees as long as you follow our guidelines. All our sessions are guaranteed to run. So if they don't run, we pay you a penalty on top of your exam training fees. Uh, we will add $50 from our side. And of course we do have a hundred percent money back on whatever money remains with us in case you don't succeed with us. So, little bit about us, what we do. Um, I think we go the complete length to make sure that you are successful as a business analyst and a data analyst. Just a, a student testimonial uh, from Pambos. Uh, in fact, there are probably 500 plus student testimonials for us today. Uh, you can go and search on Google saying, Adaptive US reviews, you'll probably get a lot of reviews. Uh, there are a lot of reviews on test uh, 
trust pilot as well. Uh, so we're trying to integrate both of them, but a little hard at this time. Uh, this is what I was telling you. Usually, the CBDA session is taken by my colleague Tom Tomasovic. Uh, sometimes I do pitch in as well, but I think out of our five trainers, four are CBDA certified. Myself, Victoria, Nora, and Tom. Uh, coming to what you will find with us versus our competitors. Uh, we are priced at $749 for CBDA. Our competitors are usually at about $2,000, uh, near to $2,000. Uh, but most of them don't give any guarantee that you will pass the test. Or if you don't pass the test, they will back you up. Nothing like that. So here is a link that you can go and download 50 CBDA mock questions. That's a very nice resource that you can have. And I would also recommend you to uh, go ahead and create a login for yourself at uh, thinkific.adaptiveus.com. And this is where you can actually experience our study guide, video recordings, and a lot of other things, flashcards, a lot of things you can explore uh, at this site as well. So please note this uh, particular coupon code. And if you buy something within one week, give us this code, we will give you extra access of two months. So usually our products are limited to six months, uh, sometimes up to three months as well. Uh, but if you give this code, you will be able to extend that access by another two months, which is $1.80 uh, worth of uh, money. So with us, uh, rest assured, we will work with you. Um, and we, we are a great partner to IIBA as well. Uh, so whatever new things come to the world of BA, you will definitely see it coming from Adaptive very, very soon. I'm quite hopeful maybe in 2023, um, IIBA will come up with something on strategic analysis, which is an exciting area for all BAs. So I'm quite hopeful if that product comes to the market, uh, maybe we can guide you through that process as well. Uh, we can help you in cybersecurity area if you're interested. We can help you in product ownership area if you're interested. So we cover the entire spectrum of IIBA uh, BA curriculum. So there's nothing that we don't offer that IIBA offers. So that's about it. Uh, this is what I wanted to cover with you. And I'm quite hopeful that many of you would become IIBA certified very soon. And some of you may become our student as well. And both of us will feel proud that uh, you got certified and we are inching towards a great training institute uh, with so many student success stories. So now let me take a look at the Q and A. Um, Okay, I think uh, one of you had asked a question, how do I get a hand of practice questions? I already gave you. Uh, the answer is go to bit.ly. It's a short link, uh, which is cbda questions. So this is where uh, you can get some handsome questions on CBDA. Um, there's another question saying, what is the success rate of students who take self-paced, that means they study on their own versus training. Uh, we really don't track it for uh, non-training students. We mostly track it for training students, but usually it is faster if you get trained. Maybe the success rates aren't drastically different. It could be 80% for people who do their own self-study, could be 95% for people who do training. But the space at which they complete the certification can be quite different. So somebody getting trained can get certified in three months. Somebody not getting trained could take nine months. That could be the difference. 
uh, okay. One of you have asked, is there any requirement of earning PDUs? No, uh, this exam does not require you to put in any PDU, uh, but if you get trained, you can use that those hours to use it as a CDU for other certifications. Like if you have already completed CBAP and you need for your recertification CDUs, uh, this training PDUs can be used for that purpose. I will say. Uh, statistics. Um, okay. Uh, one good question about the difference between analytics and statistics. You may learn a little bit of statistics. I'm not saying that statistics is a strict no no. It, it is there to some extent, but it is not a statistician's course. So it's more of a BA course to understand. And maybe you can you need help from a statistician uh, if you are really looking at a problem which requires that kind of a rigor. But for most, if you understand p-value, r-value, a uh, couple of statistical terms, you should be fine. You don't have to compute uh, like a statistician. Usually, the study guide is good enough. You don't have to refer to others. But I believe a lot of resources are on internet. Like for me, finding this KNN and those kind of things were hard because the study guide did not get into that level of detail, which I wanted to understand. Uh, but from the exam point of view, generally the study guide is good enough. Oh, one of you have asked, do you need to take CBAP before taking CBD? Nothing like it. All IIBA certifications are independent. You can take them in any order you like. Uh, so if you have a greater interest in data side of the story, take CBDA, no harm. But if you want to understand the entire application development, entire BA process, maybe ECBA, CCBA, CBAP are better from that perspective because they deal with more in the application development or enterprise business analysis better. Whereas CBDA primarily focuses on data analysis, but the exams are completely independent of each other. You must meet certain requirements to take certain tests. Uh, like for CBAP, you need five years of BA experience. Those criteria you have to meet, but otherwise there is no expectation that uh, you follow this approach. But for core certifications, usually it makes sense to start with the lower level, then go up the higher level because you are getting practice. So CBAP direct attempt can be a little challenging for some students. Okay, we provide all three formats of training for CBDA. Uh, one, we call it as self-paced learning, which you can do yourself. Um, then we have self-paced learning with faculty support. And then of course we have training sessions for live training as well. For this year, we are able to offer live training only for North America, Europe, and Asia, not Australia. Uh, so in 2023, we would probably start live training for the Australian region as well. Right now, we don't offer it for Australia, but we offer it for North America, Europe, Africa, and Asia. Okay, is there any other question anybody has? Uh, there were some questions on the chat about discounts, etc. Oh, okay, okay. One second. Yes, yes, Let's yes. If you, could, if you could, if you could put that yeah. in, and yeah. then the questions that people had about IIBA discounts, um, you, yeah. I'm going to just type the the IIBA information email address on here. Yes. So I've given you the coupon code as well, and it's visible in front of you as well. Any other okay. questions that we can answer for, for you today? Just type them up into the Q&A interface. 
And one last request to all of you, please treat every certification journey as a learning path. Other than the designation that you can carry and you can put, like I have put my name as CVAP, CBDA, CPOA, forget that part. That part is helpful to some extent while your resume gets shortlisted, you get called for an interview, uh, you can bag in consulting assignment. It's quite helpful from that perspective. But other than that, the learning process continues if you remain or try new certifications. And in today's world, especially in a knowledge world, if you are not learning anything new, uh, you will become obsolete very, very soon. The time that I graduated, just about 30 years back, uh, the way we worked and the, wor the way the world operates today are so vastly different. And if I wouldn't keep up on skills, nobody would hire me. And same thing will happen to you as well. I've seen that happening to many of my friends and colleagues who did not bother to upgrade themselves and they ran into very, very rough weather. Okay. Uh... Anita, I really don't know. You have to check at our website. I don't remember all the CDUs. I think it's about 30 if I remember well, but I think our website can tell you exactly how many CDUs come from this particular training. Because for self-paced learning, you get something. For live training, you get a little bit more. Maybe I can go to our page and show you. Uh, one second, let me go to our page. And let me go to courses, CBDA. And let's see what do they offer. Ah, uh, here. Okay, it's here. So for self-paced learning, you get 15 CDUs. And for the live training, you get 30. You get double because you're actually interacting with the faculty for a lot more time. So that's how the course is designed. Okay. Good. So I think any other question? Uh, no, the training fees don't include exam fees. The exam fees are to be paid to IIBA directly. Uh, of course, Kani, you can get the link as I gave you. Uh, just go to this link, bit.ly cbda questions. This is where you will find the questions or free questions that you're looking for. Okay, so I think we are on top of the hour. Judy, is there anything else you would like to tell the students or? participants? Yeah, I, th I think we're good. Uh, this would wrap up our time. Um, thank you so much, Ellen, for being here and for uh, the information that you have provided. Uh, thank you for your expertise. We appreciate uh, your time. And I'd like to thank everyone for participating today and for asking your questions. Uh, as we mentioned, the um, uh, the webinar recording will be available within 10 days on our website. Um, and um, I did type in the, um, e the general email address for IIBA on the chat. If you have any questions for us, do let us know. And uh, thanks once again for being here. We all hope you have a terrific day and we'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye.